Hello team, I hope you're all well. Today is Wednesday and I'm going to be starting a 24 hour timer challenge. I haven't done one of these for a couple of months and I've missed doing them. So I have been working from home today. I haven't been feeling too good, I'm not going to lie. Uh, last night both me and Andy ended up with a dicky tummy. We think it was something we ate for tea and for me it continues on into the following day a little bit because I have IBS on top of a general dicky tummy anyway. So too much information, way to open the vlog stuff. Um, but yeah, I haven't been feeling too well so I've been working from home. I've done some work for my dad this morning but I've only done half day because he needs the invoice and doing this week and he's going to send me them later on this week, either tomorrow or Friday. I did nip out though. I did nip into town. I wanted to get some fresh air and just get out of the house so I didn't get cabin fever. Sometimes what I can end up doing is because I'm feeling a little bit shit physically, I will then mentally encourage that and then make myself feel worse physically as well. So to get out of the house and get some fresh air, I do feel a little bit better and it has helped me somewhat. I've just been finishing editing last week's vlog. So I've been finishing doing that and it is now... 20 past three and i would like to start this vlog and get a few hours in today for this 24 hour timer challenge i will be doing it tomorrow and friday as well i'll be doing some patron sprints tomorrow from 11 and then we'll have all day tomorrow and all day friday plus some time for my dad as well which i can combine well potentially maybe uh combine listening to an audiobook with doing the invoices we'll see how that goes but there's a few things i want to tell you about so first of all i did nip into town and i got a couple of books let's tell you about those first because a couple of these will be going on this tbr pile of possibilities uh so i did end up picking up tangled up in you by christina lauren from the works for 350 absolute bargain um this is quite not as easy to get your hands on to be honest i think it's part of this series that's been done by a few different um authors and i have seen this one about quite a bit recently actually in a couple of charity shops but i do enjoy christina lauren's books and i believe that this is like a tangled retelling so part of the acclaimed and best-selling meant to be collection dream up a witty and deeply romantic modern reimagining of the princess in the tower for anyone who has ever longed to let their hair down it sounds interesting i just thought i would pick it up it was only 350 so i did get that one and then i also got hate mail by donna marchetti for three quid which is an absolute bargain i do have an e-arc of this one i know don't give me shit for it but the cover for this is stunning and it's supposed to be like a reimagining of you've got mail which is one of my favorite movies of all time i absolutely love it so i really want to read this one i feel like it will be although this does give summer vibes i feel like it will be because it's a reimagining of you've got mail i feel like it could give me autumnal vibes maybe um so i do have this one as well uh so they were the ones that i did get from the works and then from waterstones one of these was delivered this morning but from waterstones the one that was delivered this morning it does come out tomorrow officially but it is the cinnamon bun bookstore by laurie gilmore it will be going on the pile of possibilities for this 24 hour round uh this is the next one in the pumpkin spice cafe series um dream harbor series and i'm really really excited about reading it because it sounds so good so i love this series so far and then from waterstones itself within the bookstore i did end up picking up a couple of translated books and then a couple of thrillers as well and i'm really looking forward to all of these so i've got the ghost cat by alex howard i actually don't know if this is translated it just looks like the translated books that i've been picking up recently so maybe it's not oh i don't think it is i think i've just assumed which is quite bad of me to do so but uh it follows a cat 12 decades nine lives one cat and it sounds fantastic and i'm obsessed so i did pick this one up which could go on my possibility pile and then i also got the full moon coffee shop by my mochizuki my apologies this also comes out officially tomorrow the 29th the same time as the cinnamon bookstore so i did manage to get this early and i got it while i was in the store it sounds beautiful and it's another one of those slice of life stories 
and heartwarming and magical the full moon coffee shop will remind you that it's never too late to discover your purpose sign me up it sounds beautiful then i also got death at morning house by maureen johnson i did have this pre-ordered from waterstones then they cancelled my order because the isbn number wasn't the correct isbn number anymore so they cancelled my order gave me a refund and then said if you want to order it this is the right isbn number so while i was in there they had it and i just picked it up so much confusion i didn't actually finish the truly devious series by maureen johnson but i did enjoy it i got to hand on the wall i read hand on the wall but then box in the woods was getting to a point where our main character was no longer going to be at school anymore and she was going to be out in the open world and i just don't know if i was going to have the same vibes and it took me way too long to make that decision so i just got rid of them but this one sounds really good so i'm looking forward to this i think it's like a murder mystery clue type of book and it sounds great other than that i know nothing else about it but the cover itself i wanted it i needed it just for the cover itself i don't know if there's anything under the dust jacket i didn't check no pretty spine though and then the last one that i did get is one that i looked at the other day actually while i was in waterstones and didn't end up picking up i ended up when i was in with andy not the other day when i went getting my blood test i ended up picking up some other bits instead what did i end up getting instead oh heads will roll by josh winning i ended up getting that instead and the keanu reeves story as well um the book of elsewhere i ended up picking that one up as well uh, but this one i did um and an i did um and ah and ended up putting it back so i ended up getting it today because i was like i actually really want to read it and i've heard very good things and it is we used to live here by marcus clewer 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 my apologies i will find out how to pronounce that which i think is a haunted house story maybe it's a horror though and i'm looking forward to it i think it's a haunted house story but i've heard really good things and it sounds great so i picked that one up as well so then i do have a collection of like pile of possibilities for this reading vlog i'm gonna start off with a dangerous collaboration by diana rayborn which is the fourth book in the veronica speedball series because i'm already 141 pages in so i'm gonna finish this off i'm really enjoying it we are following veronica and stoker in this book and we're following veronica and stoker in all of the veronica speedwell books in this one veronica has been taken to an island not of, against her will but she's been taken to an island by stoker's brother and he has promised her this really rare butterfly that she actually thought was extinct at this island now stoker has ended up going of his own free will as well because he wasn't happy about the fact that veronica was going with his brother green and monster and all that business and the host malcolm a few years ago his bride disappeared on the day of their wedding now everyone has told him that she ran away but it just doesn't add up for him and he would like her to be found so i think he's invited them under the pretense of helping him try and figure out what's happened well under the pretense of this butterfly for veronica but it turns out he actually wants them to help him find out what's happened to his bride so rosemond and that's where we're up to and i'm really enjoying it so far so i want to finish this one off i might as well finish off a book i'm part way through and then the other one that i really do definitely want to get to that i'm gonna prioritize is under the oak tree the comic which was sent to me by del rey and does come out on the 3rd of september so i do want to prioritize this before it comes out and i feel like this is a good time to do so so i will be prioritizing this i don't think it'll take me too long to get through and i only have three hours of the audiobook left of this but i do as i've mentioned have a very large pile of possibilities for this readathon but i don't anticipate getting through them all obviously because that would be wild but this is the pile of possibilities we do like to do this it gives me freedom to roam around with these books i really wanted to do this as a very quick intro and it's just not worked out that way because i can't stop rambling I mean, I have given you a haul and then a quick run through what my pile of possibilities are. I don't know. We'll see. I may do a spinner wheel for this because honestly, I can't decide what to read because I want to get to all of these right this second. So I may do a spinner wheel, but we'll see. I'll make a decision on that later on. I think for today, though, the rest of the day, I'm going to concentrate on getting through a dangerous collaboration and then maybe under the oak tree or I may spin at that point for another book. We'll see what happens because then I won't have an audio book on the go so 
I don't know. And also, as always, the pile of possibilities do not guarantee that I will stay within that. I might want to pick something else up. So we'll see what happens. But I will check back in with you when I have read A Dangerous Collaboration, I think. necessary for me to come on and talk to you about Veronica and Stoker just very very quickly I'm hoping I can make this quick <laughs> I'm I'm so desperate for this romance to happen but I'm so desperate for it not to because the pining and the way that these two speak to each other it will not be the same the minute that romance happens but I, I, I really I really really want it to but I also don't. <laughs> They're going for a walk with another woman um, in this book and uh, Veronica has had to say to Stogie, you need to button your shirt up. Um, and he said that he's struggling with his arm after a fight with his brother. <laughs> Just don't. Uh, and so she helps him button his shirt up and then she says to him, she's coming. You need to be less adorable. And I just, the whole time, I am grinning like a Cheshire cat. I have my eyes closed and I am like this. And I'm just so desperate for it to be more, but also not to. I don't, I, I, I want the romance really, really bad, but I also don't because I just don't think it will be the same when it is. I, the pining, I just, I cannot. Anyway, I have two hours of the audiobook left. I've just listened to an hour of the audiobook, so I've got an hour and 54 minutes left. I'm going to carry on. But I just, I needed to come on because I, I am just so obsessed with them. I love them so immensely. Love them. <laughs> quite ready to attack the day. Autumn winter, definitely on their way. It is almost pitch black outside, almost pitch black. And he's just left to go to work. I have just put a wash in the washing machine. I have delayed it for a few hours because it is still quite early. And although my washing machine isn't on the join inside, it just seems like too much to be going on for right now. <laughs> I need to wake up a little bit more. But I do have a couple of updates for you. So um, I have finished A Dangerous Collaboration by Deanna Rayborn. This obviously got five stars. I think, can't decide if this is my favourite one so far or not because things happen in this one with Veronica and Stoker as far as feelings are concerned. And... <laughs> I was messaging back and forth with Katie, well, messaging forth, back and then one fourth. Um, she messaged me to say, oh my God, can't believe you're on book four already. 
um, hope you're loving it and then followed that up with oh my god I ask and you deliver because I did start this in my previous vlog and it's on the thumbnail but I didn't finish it in that vlog so I did let her know I didn't finish it in that vlog and I was literally four minutes away from finishing it and then a thing happens at the end <laughs> and I messaged her and I was like stop it I cannot believe such and such a thing happened um i'm just obsessed this could be my favorite one so far i have a feeling we could be at a turning point with this relationship honestly you know i've been going on about the fact that i really want them to just get it on um but i'm also anxious because i feel like that could change the trajectory of how i feel about the series i think we could be at a turning point but i i, I don't think it's going to change how i feel about this this series i feel like there's a possibility I could end up giggling, kicking my feet and blushing all every single shade of red even more than I already am. I'm just having the time of my life. I love this fucking series. So next one will be a murderous relation. I don't know if I'm going to start that during this readathon. I'm tempted to put it on the spinner wheel just to pop it on or whether i will just wait and save it for next week for final book support group as a continuation station because that is now the last one that i need to listen to sorry if you can hear the traffic the windows open i am going to show that though because it's fucking freezing um that is now the last one that i need to listen to on us audible uh and the rest i can get in the uk then so having a fantastic time with this five stars it was great and then i did read last night under the oak tree at the comic well yesterday slash last night andy went up to bed after we'd had tea and i finished it off last night this was really good i haven't told you what this is about but it's following lady maximilian who's forced to marry sir rifton uh who's a lowly a low-born knight sorry and when they get married she's forced to marry him and they spend one night together which is the marital night and when she wakes up in the morning he's gone for three years like he's gone to fight in a war or something and the wedding night doesn't quite go to plan now maxi she has a stutter her dad has basically shit on her from the day she was born and said things to her like i wish you were a boy or that you died when your mother had and blah 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 and he's an absolute horrendous person so rifton then comes back from war and straight away he turns up to pick maxi up and take her to his homestead um which it turns out is this really gorgeous lavish place beautiful castle really nice wall of surrounding it because there's monsters that are trying to get in and kill all the people really nice people nobody judging her for this stutter that she's got that her dad has horrifically judged her for all her life and she's living this really lush lavish life and she's trying to get used to she seems to think that he's just gonna fuck her off and get bored of her and that is not the case he seems to be incredibly incredibly obsessed with her and yeah she's just trying to get used to believing in herself and believing in the fact that these people genuinely care about her and genuinely want her around and it's basically just like this story between the two of them their relationship their life and i think he's got some secrets going on i'm not 100 percent certain what's going on with him but there is like a darker side to him that only she seems to be able to calm down and i'm not sure what's going on so i really really enjoyed this though and i'm very excited for volume two this comes out on the 3rd of september volume one thank you to del Rey for sending me a copy but i really really enjoyed this i had a great time the illustrations are stunning it fades to black but you do get just a little bit of not quite sexy times but look at the state of this man though <laughs> so, um but the illustrations are stunning and it's a really good story it got a really high four star from me so i am going to put it on as a five star on goodreads and say that it's a 4.5 but i've rounded it up because it's a high four star uh so it's high four and a half so i really really liked this so thank you again to delray for sending me this one i'm really excited for volume two of this i don't know when it's coming out i'm already keen for volume two i feel like this is one that i mean you can get them online but i feel like this is one that could be a new favorite a little bit like laura Olympus. I feel like this could be a new favourite, so I'm very excited. This actually came from Inklaw, not 
Del Rey. My apologies. It came from Inklaw. Thank you to Inklaw for sending me this one. Is that a, yeah, it's an imprint of Penguin, which is also Del Rey. So uh, that's why I've gotten confused. But thank you to Inklaw for sending me a copy of this. I truly appreciate it. And then you will have seen that I've already done the spinner wheel for this, but I wanted to know what I was going to be picking up next. So I did end up getting Here Lies a Vengeful Bitch by Cody Crowley. I'm obsessed with this cover and also this title and then the dedication as well is so good if you're so pissed off it feels like the next man who mistakes you for a good time is going to find out you're actually his worst nightmare this book is for you it sounds really good i didn't get too far in last night i did just want to start it though because i am one of those people that if i don't start my next book the night before i it will take me forever to get started the next day so i'm 14 pages in just into the up to the second chapter and this one is following a young girl called annie elaine who was murdered um but they think they killed a girl they only made a monster annie elaine was murdered but they won't slow her down the mountain her body was dumped on is legendary for raising the dead so after waking up in the same frigid water that hides her corpse Annie surges into her backwards hometown, hell-bent on revenge. The problem is, Annie can't remember who killed her, and the list of people who might have wanted to isn't exactly short. There's a to toxic mum who spends her rare sober moments ripping Annie a new one. There's her boss at the diner who's always been a little too friendly, and there's her cheating ex and his creepy bandmates who are just shit-brained enough to think they could get away with this. All she has to go on are tequila-fogged memories and a blood-stained leather jacket, but Annie won't stop until she gets what she came for. Someone knows the truth, someone is to blame, someone has to pay for what happened to Annie Lane. Um, it's a furious, fast-paced and darkly funny Here Lies, Here Lies Vengeful Bitch is at once a propulsive mystery and exhilarating love letter to anyone who's ever been told to be a good girl or else. I'm really looking forward to this one. I actually saw a really good comparison for this, uh, which made me even more excited about it on Cody's Instagram yesterday. And I want to tell you what that was because I, it made me immediately want to like pick this back up again because obviously I bought it. Um, what was the comparison? There it is. Debut author Crowley combines Stephen King's Pet Cemetery with Courtney Summers' Sadie in this supernatural thriller. That's from Publishers Weekly. I loved both Pet Cemetery and Sadie, so I think it's going to be really good. But in the first chapter, we have um, Annie waking up on this mountain and there's a few different people there there's been she's come across four different people so far um a woman has helped her out so far she doesn't know that she's dead she's not been able to figure it out yet but she does keep choking on water on land essentially just drowning on land uh, repeatedly and passing out so she's trying she's not fully figured it out yet so I'm interested to see how this is going to go and I didn't want to get too far into the book because I didn't then want to stop because I feel like this could be a good one to smash out in a day. So I'm going to try and get this smashed out this morning. I've got sprint starting at 11 and I only have three and a half hours left of this. So I reckon I can get to another book before sprint start at 11. In fact, I can get way into another book before sprint start at 11, I think. Uh, we are currently... Well, it'll be six o'clock before I sit down now to start this. So it's going to be, you know, half nine if I don't take a break. When I get this finished-ish, so that I can get into another book, about an hour into another book. Uh, the timer, as far as that is concerned, this place looks like Blackpool Illumination. It's got every single light on. Parents ever say that to you. I've got 19 hours left, just under 19 hours left. Um, so we did make it five hours in yesterday. So I did a pretty good chunk yesterday. It would be nice to maybe get like, I'm doing sprints today, so I don't know how many hours I will get in today, but eight to nine hours would be great today. And then I'm left with 10 to 11 hours tomorrow. So we'll see what happens today. I'm glad I started this yesterday though because to do 12 hours today and 12 hours tomorrow would have been a feat in itself I think especially with sprints as well because obviously I stop start the timer every time I have a chatty bit in a sprint so I'm gonna go and get Here Lies Eventual Bitch Red very excited about this one I think it's gonna be really good so I'm gonna go and do that and I'll check back in with you we've gone for ultimate comfort today as well this is like one of the baggiest jumpers I own my other one is my supernatural one um i have no intention of leaving the house today i just want cozy i want reading and if my dad does send me that work through i will do it but otherwise complete cozy ultimate comfort level so that's what we're going to do today and i will check back in with you when i finish this
Okay, hello, sorry. I came on to update you and then had to stop and now I've started again. I, the Ghost Smith book <laughs> came live from Fairly and I needed to get a copy. Right, we're back. I'm here to update you. Um, we have 15 hours and 20 minutes left on the clock. Uh, so we're still going and I have just finished Here Lies a Vengeful Bitch by Cody Crowley. I did film a, a couple of bits so it is 25 past 10 and I do have sprints starting in 35 minutes. So I have finished this one. This was good. I enjoyed it. I think... Um, so obviously we're following Annie Lane. Someone has killed her and she's woke up dead and she's she can't remember anything that's happened to her she remembers that she went to this concert where her ex-boyfriend was uh was playing and that is all she remembers and slowly but surely she's having to try and piece this together with a bunch of other people that are also dead um and try and figure out exactly who it was that has brought harm to her and also where her best friend is because her best friend's got missing as well she's trying to locate her best friend so it was good i liked it i think that we went round in circles maybe a little bit there were a few plot holes Holes. for example Annie and the other people that are with her that are dead Sam could drink and eat and sleep and take showers and could speak to the living like the living could see them the living didn't even know they were dead and there's some plot holes because there's no explanation behind that which was a little bit confusing and I didn't fully understand I couldn't fully grasp what was going on there like I knew she was dead but part of me also questioned whether or not she was actually dead so there are a few plot holes but otherwise i thought it was quite good and i did enjoy it there were many twists and turns towards the end i did have some predictions which we went in that direction a little bit and then it went off and you know we you thought you were at the end of it and then you weren't and you thought you had it figured out and then you didn't and i liked that side of things it was really hard to pin down exactly who it was but i enjoyed it i think it was a fun time it was very fast paced it was quick but there are plot holes uh, so i did give it three and a half stars but overall i enjoyed it love this cover love the title good time so you will have just seen that i've done another roll and we did get a magical girl retires by park seolian I'm not sure if that's how you pronounce that. I do apologise. This is translated. And I got this from Waterstones a little while ago. In fact, I think I got it for the 9K book shopping video that I did. Um, where I bought nine books for 9K. And it's absolutely stunning. It is very short. And I do have the audiobook. Um, but I believe... I don't know if this is on TV. Reimagines classic fairy, uh, fantasy tropes in a novel that explores real world challenges that are both deeply personal and universal. The search for meaning and desire to do good in a world that feels like it's ending. A fun, fast paced and enchanting narrative that sparkles thanks to award nominated translator Anton Her. A magical girl retires reminds us that we are all magical girls and that fighting evil by moonlight and winning by love uh, winning love by daylight can be anyone's game. This is following our main character. She's 29 years old. I'm not sure what her name is fully. Um, but she's depressed and drowning in credit card debt after losing her job during a pandemic. A woman decides to end her troubles by jumping off Seoul Maypo's bridge. But while her but her attempt is interrupted by a girl dressed in all white. Our Rose the clairvoyant magical girl is on a mission to find the greatest magical girl of all time and our pro protagonist might uh, just might be that special someone but the young woman's initial excitement turns to frustration when she learns being a magical girl in real life is much different than how it's portrayed in stories it isn't just destiny it's work magical girls go to job fairs join trade unions and attend classes and for this magical girl there are no special powers and no great perks and despite being magical she still battles with low self-esteem her magic wand is a credit card which she must use to defeat a terrifying threat that's neither monster nor intergalactic war a millennial turned magical girl must combat climate change and credit card debt in this whimsical and wildly imaginative ode to magical girl manga it sounds really good and there are illustrations every now and then throughout so i don't think it's going to take me too long to get through a couple of hours maybe and yeah this is going to be my next read so i will be back to do a, another spinny spin after this one and i'll let you know my thoughts on this in fact do we do that spinny spin now while i'm here because it is a short one and then i can get a ways into my next book and then i can let you know my thoughts on this and explain my next book let's do that shall we all right let's see what we get shall we
Okay, Locked Door by Frida McFadden. Life is a winding road No telling where it goes Driving through days and nights Won't stop for traffic lights And I Searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down bit later on it's one o'clock i've just put some lunch in i've got 29 minutes left of this sprint i have got i've not just put some lunch in i've got four minutes left until lunch is ready uh my dad's just sent the invoices over so i'm doing those as well multitasking queen we've got 13 hours 45 minutes left on the clock so i've just finished a magical girl retires and this was good i gave it three stars i liked it i thought it was a fun time i thought it was interesting a very interesting concept how our main character does start off with suicidal thoughts and wanting to kill herself and then comes across aroa who convinces her not to and says that she's you know the magical girl of time and they need her help and stuff and things don't actually work out as she thought they would and you know climate change and debt and money crisis and things like that are all still a thing even though she is the magic supposed to be the magical girl of time and things just go a little bit awry and it's a very interesting concept the translator's note at the end was interesting as well a very good way of looking at the world especially for not necessarily my generation but the generations to come especially like my nephews and even their children um we are leaving the world in a dire state for them and it's quite shocking really when you think about it so it was interesting i did give it three stars and i had a good time with it. it's a very beautiful book so i was then supposed to be going on to the locked room Sorry, The Locked Door by Frida McFadden. That's what I spun for. However, um, after having a chat with my patrons, Clan in a Cornfield 3 is on its way to me today. It's its release date today and it's on its way to me. And I really wanted to try and reread the others before it came. Now, I'd pre-ordered this with Waterstones, but i ended up cancelling my pre-order yesterday because it hadn't been shipped out yet and i could get it with amazon to be delivered today for release day so i kind of really want to prioritize that either today or tomorrow so my thought process because i then mentioned to my patrons that i kind of wanted to reread the first two is now to spend the rest of the time rereading these two and then reading the third one i don't know if i'm going to be able to manage it in the 14 hours 45 minutes that are left because i don't know how long these actually are but clan the cornfield one clan the cornfield two friendo lives um i'm gonna reread them it's been a while since i read this one i don't know when i actually read this one 2022 i read this one and same with this one so i must have read them back to back so it has been a couple of years and it would be great to reread these so these are uh ya slasher horror think scream and and halloween type books i've got one minute left and we're following quinn her and her father moved to a tiny town with a weird clown for a mascot they're looking for a fresh start but ever since the town's only factory shut down kettle springs has been cracked in half most of the town believes the kids are to blame after all the juniors and seniors at kettle springs high are the ones who threw the party where arthur's hill's daughter died they're the ones who set the abandoned factory on fire and who spend all their time posting pranks on youtube they have no respect and no idea what it means to work hard 
had for the kids it's the other way around and now kettle springs is caught in a constant battle between old and new tradition and progress it's a fight that looks like it will destroy the town until one homicidal clown with a porcupine hat and red nose decides to end it all for good because if your opponents all die you will debate by default you win the debate by default even so i'm very excited about reading these i gave both of them five stars so i'm looking forward to rereading them i know this has taken maybe a bit of a boring turn for you guys but i'm excited which means that hopefully you guys will also be excited so yeah i'm looking forward to reading that's my alarm for my lunch i'm looking forward to reading both of these so that's gonna be my plan now is to read both of these and then clown in a cornfield three and I hope you enjoy the ride because I am very much so looking forward to it. I do apologise. I know you're probably enjoying the spinner wheel and me not knowing what I was picking up. Um, but it is what it is. If it turns out that by some form of miracle I do still have time left over at the end, I will fit in the locked room. But I don't think that that is going to happen by any means. So yeah, we're going to go and I'm going to get started on Clan in a Cornfield 1. And I will let you know my full thoughts on it when I'm done, I reckon. <laughs> It is Friday, it's currently 10 past 9 and we have 6 hours and 17 minutes left on the clock. I have been sat at my desk since 10 to 6 <laughs> working and listening to my books. So quick update for you, I did finish Clown the Cornfield 1 yesterday by Adam Cesar and I gave this 5 stars. I gave it 4.5 stars the first time I read it but I haven't been able to stop thinking about this book and this series in general since I read this 2 years ago so and I'm constantly saying that I'm looking for books like this so I think it deserves the 5 star and that's what I've given it upon reread. This series is following our main character Quinn. Her and her father moved to this new town which is a small town and has a lot of cornfields but the town folk blame the kids for the way the town seems to be declining. There was an incident that happened the year prior that we get in the prologue where um, a young girl died and since then the town folk have been blaming the kids for this. So there's a little bit of an uprising between the adults and the kids within this town and Quinn and her dad move in. And then things start going awry. A clown, Frendo, who is the mascot for the town, starts to kill people and there is a serial killer on the loose and that's basically the story of it so i've read this one which i gave five stars and i have just now finished clown the cornfield friendo lives at two i did get to just over page 100 yesterday um and then stopped so i have just finished this one now this morning and this one continues on from where book one left off uh, but we're following the kids they're kind of like at college now um some time has passed i don't know just how much time has passed but some time has passed and then there's a, a bit of an uprising in town and the friendo business continues um so they start to target quinn again and her friends as well the people that survived basically the first massacre and it's continuing and again, this one got five stars. It got five stars the first time I read it. It's got five stars the second time I've read it. So now we are into the home stretch and we're going to pick up Clown the Cornfield Church of Frendo, 
this is the third one in the series and came out yesterday. I'm really glad that I've done this, but at the same time, I only really thought about this when I was halfway through Clan in a Cornfield and I was committed at that point. <laughs> um, and I knew that if I then changed my mind and said, oh, I'll just read Clan in a Cornfield one and two and then save this for a later date, it would piss everybody off, including myself. So I'm going to do it anyway. But what I've realised is that I, there is a reason why I don't read series back to back and it's because I can get quite bored. Now, I'm not bored by by any means but at this point like all of these books are on bookbeat which i have an affiliate code if you were interested by the way that can get you 60 days free it's in the description box down below i do get some commission from that just to be very transparent uh, but i use bookbeat a lot however i will say the only downside i've ever had with bookbeat is that they only go up to two times speed so when i'm doing a reread and i want to get to book three but kind of like quickly just refresh myself on books one and two i ended up going to to Everend because they have two and a half times speed so I've managed to get through these pretty quickly but I'm now going to go back to book beat for Clan the Cornfield 3 I mean Everend don't even have it available for me yet anyway I can't read it till September so I'm going to read this listen to this on book beat and it's 11 hours long so it's going to take me about five and a half hours to get through um so this is the longest one in the series so far and i am really looking forward to reading it i just hope that i don't get part way through today because it is five and a half hours it is quite a big chunk just hoping i don't get part way through and get a little bit bored so i think what i'm gonna do is start it maybe get about 50 to 100 pages in and then i'm gonna take a break and i'm gonna do some filming i think that's what i'm gonna do just to break my day up a little bit because it will become quite monotonous M monotonous quite monotonous is that the right word you know what i'm saying it i could become quite bored so i think that's what i'm going to do i think that's going to be my plan for the day other than that i have nothing else planned today i have no sprints with patrons i can literally put this on and just listen to it for the whole day but i do think i might just break my time up if it gets to a point where i don't want to break my time up that's absolutely fine i will just continue but if i get to a point where i need to break my time up i probably will do so and do a little bit of filming there are a couple of videos that I can pre-film so I'll probably do that I think um but yeah so far really enjoying myself having a good time I just suddenly remembered there is a reason why I don't read these books why I don't read series back to back because I do like I say get bored and I haven't broken this th this up with anything else if I'd thought my way through this process initially I could have started off with Clan in a Cornfield then read something else then read Clan in a Cornfield 2 then read something else and then picked this up <laughs> I didn't do that clearly. Uh, I could break this up by reading a manga between that and this but I just don't know if I necessarily see the point because I just don't think it will be enough to break it up. So I think what I'll do is get started on this so that I've actually started it and then do some filming. See I could, what I could do, oh, the thing is though I've, I've pushed clown in a cornfield into this video and stopped with the wheel because i wanted to pick this up straight away as soon as it came in so doing this i don't know if that's a good idea i was going to say it's final book support group next week um so what i could do i don't know if this is a final book or not but it is the next book in the series regardless so what i could do is push this into next week but I don't know if that's a good idea for several reasons. First of all, I already have a TBR for next week and it's already a little bit obscene. I could take a couple of those books off and read them now. Um, but I also feel like that's just annoying for everyone because I've gone and changed what I was doing with this vlog, with the spinner wheel, to fit this series in. So I don't know what to do now. Maybe I take this to a poll. Maybe that's what I'll do. Maybe I'll take a break, take this to a poll, maybe film something and then come back and let you know what's been decided. I don't know whether to let my patrons decide because they decided that I should sack the spinner wheel off and fit this series in. The rereads and then this or whether I should take it to Instagram and get a bigger vote in maybe. 
or a mix of the two and see what the general overall gist is maybe that's what i'll do so i'm going to do that actually let's do that just to throw more confusion in there <laughs> A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, howdy doody. I've imported the clips for this vlog and a lot of them are in this room again. My apologies. I do, honest to God, spend a lot of time in this room. I've been sat in this room since six o'clock this morning. It's now five past 11. And um, I do spend a lot of time in here. Okay, so I need to tell you, <laughs> Andy's ended up with a half day. So this may bleed into tomorrow a little bit. We will see what happens. I mean, there's, it doesn't need to finish today. I was just planning on doing it today because he's at work. But we've still got six hours, 17 minutes on the clock as we had before. And I did do a poll to see whether people thought I should go back to the spinner wheel or continue on with clan in the cornfield. And the results are in and there are 51 votes for back to the spinner wheel and 24 votes for clan in the cornfield so i did explain that i was initially doing the spinner wheel and then i changed my mind to binge a clan in the cornfield series and now i've suddenly remembered why i don't binge series i what i would hate is to get halfway through this or part way through it and be frustrated and bored and not want to finish it it's not the book that i'm bored of it's the situation of being in the same world with the same characters in the same mindset and everything um for a long period of time so i mean you know if this was one 1000 page book that's one thing but to read three of the same as not the same book they're not the same they are very similar they're not the same though the story does continue and again the time frames i'm not sure what the time frames are between these books but i'm fairly certain they're pretty much back to back if not just a couple of weeks or months in between each store like each book so um I just wanted to give people the option to vote on that and they have chosen go back to the spinner wheel. So if you remember before I picked up and changed my mind from the spinner wheel and picked up clan in a cornfield, I did do a spinner wheel spin and the locked door came up by Frida McFadden. So I'm really interested in reading this one. And I am very excited about it. I do wonder though whether maybe I should switch up the genre because I read um, Here Lies a Vengeful Bitch, then went into Clan in a Cornfield 1 and 2, which are horrors, and this is a psychological thriller. I mean, maybe it won't be too bad. And I think Frieda McFadden's writing style is pretty, pretty damn quick, so... I think I will go into this one. This one is following Nora, who is 11 years old. She's upstairs in her bedroom, and she's no idea that her father is killing a woman in the basement until the police arrive at the front door. Decades, le decades later now, Nora's father is spending his life behind bars, and Nora is a successful surgeon with a quiet, solitary existence. Nobody knows about her past, and she'll do anything to keep it up that way. Then, one of her young female patients winds up dead in the exact same kind of situation that that woman in the basement her dad's basement was killed and it looks like someone's trying to set nora up however nora obviously didn't do this surely not and there is no evidence to prove of to prove otherwise so long as they don't look in her basement it does say a riveting psychological thriller about guilt secrets and whether it's possible to outrun what's in our blood I do enjoy a good thriller or mystery that features a parent being a serial killer or a murderer of some sort and then the pair the the you know the children of that parent are in a situation where they're faced with a repeat of that and now they're not sure what's going on um so i am interested to know what this is about so i think i'm going to go into this one i do have a note of the audiobook times on this so it's eight hours 15 minutes and i've got 
I can do it on two and a half times speed. So it'll take me about three hours and 20 minutes. So I will have some time left to fit another book in, but I will then have to be kind of restrictive on what I'm picking up at that point. So we're gonna go into this one. I think that's gonna be my plan. I do still aim to film something else before I start this. So I think that's what I will do. And then I'll get started on that one, but I will keep you posted on it, let you know how it's going. I'm very excited to pick that one up. Uh, shout out to you if you did vote for on that poll for me. I do appreciate it. I do feel a little bit better now that I'm going back to the spinner wheel to be perfectly honest because honestly the locked door has been on my mind since I put it back on the shelf. Um, I am still very excited about this one but I will aim to get to it. I will. I won't aim to get to it. I'm going to prioritise it for final book support group next week. I promise. I pinky swear. In fact I'll make it the first book that I read next week. How's about that? Cash me outside, how about that? Um, I will make it my priority for next week. Uh, so, sorry, team. <laughs> sorry um but yeah i am very excited still to get to it i just honest to god didn't think my way through the thought process of binging this series back to back and being with these characters for such a long period of time um in which the books are supposed to be split up you know so it will probably actually do me some good to have a break in between as well so that i can differentiate between the second book and the third book um so yeah i'm excited to get to this though so keep stay tuned for next week's video as well where this will be featured in that my apologies if that's pissed anybody off hello hello me again a little bit of time has gone by i'm just having a bit of a nightmare exporting a little bit of footage for a video that i'm doing for i'm pre-filming for october so i've filmed something i've edited it and now i'm having an issue exporting it my software is being a pain in the ass i have read a little bit of locked door the locked door and got started on it i'm currently on chapter five we have met nora and we have been given the backstory of what's happened with her dad and we do get flashbacks to a time when she was a child so i think we're going to get flashbacks seeing the things that should have been red flags for her maybe and things that have ingrained themselves in her she does have a vicious streak but i think there may be like some vigilante thing go on with her with this thing i don't know but anyway so far enjoying it i haven't got too far i'm 34 pages in but so far i'm enjoying it i did receive a package though and i thought i would come and open it with you this is from a wonderful subscriber called carly um her shop is called the cozy fable i'll leave a link to it in the description box down below she sent me a little card and then she sent me some bits from her shop so i thought we could go through them together so i think we've got some stickers which is very cute indeed sorry i've just got my video playing in this clip playing in the background so i can check whether or not the screen goes blank at any point so if you see me looking over this way that's what's going on sorry i'm multitasking you see so this is the name of the company and i will leave a link to carly's instagram and shop in the description box down below this is a oh she sent me a couple of these glass cleaners glasses cleaners how handy could always do with some glasses cleaners shit I've just dropped a sticker right we've got the gang from laura limpus that is really cute i love that villains do it for me do more of what makes your soul happy self-care dark romance reader this one i don't know if it's meant to be someone specific but very cute dark romance reader again this is really really sweet and i love it again laura olympus a nice little quote and emotionally attached to fictional characters as well so those are the stickers a very nice set of stickers and then in here we've got some bookmarks i think this packaging is beautiful carly did send me these for free they are a gift so thank you so much carly i truly appreciate it she was worried about sending me these bookmarks because i've already mentioned in a video recently that i've got too many bookmarks that is because i own a bookmark shop but i did do a clear out the other week so we've got i've got room for new bookmarks which is exciting because she sent me loads okay you don't deserve all the mean things you say to yourself stop it that's really cute these are the same on the flip side through love all is possible i don't i've unhauled these books but i did love the first one in this series and i love that that quote 
then we have this one which is upside down lifetime member romance reader book club very cute i like my coffee icy and my books spicy <laughs> i don't drink coffee but this love it tired but trying life death by book hangover romanticy reader and then this one is the late night book club one i love this ticket thing it's so cute oh they are beautiful oh carly thank you so much i just wanted to unbox those with you but carly thank you so so much my love you didn't have to at all but i truly appreciate you and i haven't read this out but there's a really really nice message in it um that is very very sweet so i appreciate that carly it's very sweet of you and i adore you thank you so much so i just wanted to unbox those with you so i'm gonna go carry on sorting this bloody thing out wait for andy to get home because it's now quarter to one so I'm, i think he'll be finishing at one ish so i'm gonna wait for him to get home and continue on with the locked door in the process and i'll check back in with you and have an update for you hey i'm here to wrap this vlog up <laughs> a day or two has gone by it's the 2nd of september i did finish this on the 31st of august just about for some reason my brain really desperately wanted to say november just about i finished it on the 31st of august i managed it um i did end up going out with andy on friday for a couple of drinks and then i wrapped this all up on saturday so nailed it i did end up with some time left on the timer as well 17 minutes and 21 seconds so i did it within the time frame 24 hours with some just a little bit of time left over i wouldn't have finished anything in that time so there's no point in carrying on and i did manage to complete quite a few books as well and the aim for this mostly was uh, to honestly just have a little bit of fun with it, which I did. But also I did a challenge. Jade does these monthly challenges with her patrons. And for August, the challenge was to beat your best page count month. So my best page count was July's, which was 7,775 pages. And my aim was for 8,000 and I ended up nailing that. I think I managed like 9,000 600 or something i'll put the figure here um so i ended up annihilating the goal which is fantastic news and i also had fun so that's nice i did go back to the time with the spinner wheel sorry we started off with a couple of books that i was i well one book that i was part way through that i wanted to finish which was a dangerous collaboration by diana rayborn and i gave five stars then we had a book that was an arc so i really wanted to get to it and prioritize it which was under the oak tree um the comic so thank you to ink law for sending this one to me and i gave it four and a half stars it got five on goodreads because i really really did like it and then we did a spinner wheel for a couple of books so we had here lies vengeful bitch by cody crowley which gave three and a half stars this was a fun time and then we had a magical girl retires which i gave three stars this was also a good time and then I, we kind of went off piste and i ended up wanting to pick up the clan in the cornfield series because the third one had just well was coming out on 
that day and I wanted to prioritize it but I wanted to reread the others because I hadn't read them for two years so I reread Clan in a Cornfield 1 which this time around I ended up giving five stars it got four and a half the first time because I haven't been able to stop thinking about it since I've read it and then I moved on to Clan in a Cornfield 2 Frendo Lives which again I gave five stars it got four and a half the first time I read it for the same reason and then at this point <laughs> I've just edited all of this. This is the messiest vlog. I, it's maybe not the messiest vlog I've ever done. I think maybe the one I did previous to this one was pretty messy, but it's pretty messy. Um, I then went back to the spinner wheel because I hadn't thought my way through reading these books back to back with no break in between. So at this point, I was excited to get into book three, but I was also anxious about the fact that I could get part way through it and get really bored and just not finish it. So I decided to take it to a poll on Instagram and ask the people what they thought, what their view was on it. And they decided that I should go back to the spinner wheel. So at this point, I had already spun for The Locked Door by Freedom McFadden. So instead of spinning again, I just went back to this. And I haven't given you an update on this one. So I really enjoyed this. I thought it was very good. I ended up giving this one three and a half stars. I really liked it. I thought the twists and turns were really good. I did feel like it was maybe just a little bit repetitive, but I thought the twists and turns were really good. It's quite short. It was very fast paced, quite quick to get through. And for the most part, I didn't know where this was going to go. Uh, so I did have a good time with it. I, what I will say is that if you are like me and you're the sort of person that starts to fill your core pile in, if you do core pile, um, before you finish the book just be careful with this one because I was flicking through I don't I never count like you know if they've got an excerpt of another book in the in the back which for this one there's an excerpt of The Teacher by Frieda McFadden which I do have I don't count the pages for that because I haven't read it so I was then flicking through to see what was going on next and this spoiler for the book don't do what I did because then I kind of knew in a way where this was going and I'd spoiled myself a little bit but overall enjoyed this gave it three and a half stars had a good time and then you will have already seen but I did do another spin and I ended up managing to get Powerless by Lauren Roberts on here which is great because I did have this down for final book support group for this upcoming week but I put it on that spinner wheel just in case I could fit it in and I did so I ended up giving this one four stars this is the novella that is in between Powerless and Reckless uh, by Lauren Roberts and I liked this I can't tell you anything about what happens in here other than the fact that this runs parallel to powerless but it follows Adina who is Payden's best friend and follows exactly what happens to her if you've read powerless you will know what happens but this one follows on her side of things from her POV uh, and I liked it I thought it was good I thought it was very clever I think the issue I have with this is that because I read this knowing what the outcome is going to be maybe I couldn't fully enjoy it I have seen somewhere I can't remember where I saw it now but I have seen and I've no doubt if you could google it you could find the graphic I have seen somewhere um, a graphic of a tandem read between Powerless and Powerful in which they do the chapters. So, you know, like Throne of Glass series where they've got those two books where you can do a tandem read. Don't come for me for not knowing which books it is. I don't, I haven't read that series. I read Throne of Glass three times and I got up to, um, I got up to Air of Fire three times and just never carried on. And I'm never going to. So don't try and convince me otherwise it's not going to happen. I did unhaul them. Sorry. It just, it doesn't work for me, okay? Um, regardless, you know how you can do that tandem read where they're like, okay, read these chapters and then jump over to this book and read these chapters and then go back to the other book and do this? Apparently there is one for Powerless and Powerful and I kind of wish I'd done that, but I'd already read Powerless at this point. So... 
that is what it is but if what i would recommend is if you've got this on your radar and you're thinking of doing it maybe i haven't obviously done them in that sense but i would potentially recommend doing that because i feel like although it's nice to get her side of things and get her pov of things and see what was going on in the background while Hayden was going on with her shit with these trials and everything to see what Adina was up to it's great to see that but because I know the direction it's going in I, I also kind of didn't want to get to the end <laughs> if you know you know uh but maybe I would recommend if you haven't read them and it's on your radar maybe I would recommend trying to find that graphic for the tandem if I might have a quick look and if I can find it I'll put it on the screen here and then I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below if it's not on the screen I haven't been able to find it maybe I'm not going to google too hard about it because I've already read it um but for you guys I will have a quick google and if I can find it I'll put it on the screen and then I'll leave a link to it in the description box down below uh but yeah maybe that's what I would recommend for that but I did give this one four stars and I'm ready to move on to reckless now which I think I'm going to try and do during final book support group in the upcoming week so yeah that's everything that I read I did a pretty good job I think I don't know how many pages I read overall to be perfectly honest but I was part where i was only 140 pages into a dangerous collaboration this is the weirdest way to hold books what am i doing um i was 140 pages into a dangerous collaboration and then i read the rest of these and um yeah one two three four five six seven eight eight books two of which were a reread i don't think i did too bad to be honest in fact that's the most books i think i've read in a 24 hour time challenge which is pretty impressive not sure how I managed that because that under the oak tree as well even though it's a gra even though it's a comic it is a big one it's a chunky one I do have some smaller books on here though like powerful and the magical girl thingamabob magical girl retires they're both deemed I would say novella size and the locked door isn't that big either it's under 300 pages so regardless I had a great time I hope you have enjoyed this vlog I know it was a little bit messy soz <laughs> i've no doubt at this point you kind of if you keep coming back here i've no doubt at this point you expect nothing but chaos from me regardless but uh this this was quite chaotic i promised you spin a wheel then i derailed that and was like now nah, we're going to read the clown in the cornfield series so then i promised you that and then i derailed that and went back to the spinner and i if you've got whiplash i do apologize i'm sorry <laughs> we're all bella at this point having a conversation with edward when she first meets him i just I, my apologies um i hope you have enjoyed this video chat to me in the comments down below and i will see you in whatever comes next bye for now